Earth Day on climate change. Singapore will face more dangers from climate change as it continues. Immediate danger, flash floods. Rainstorms will grow more frequent and intense, threatening to overwhelm our drainage systems. Just last Saturday, flash floods occurred in Ulu Pandan, as 110% of rain normally seen in a month fell on Singapore in one day. On that day, drains and canals in western Singapore exceeded 90% of their capacity, placing much of Singapore in harm's way. Our response to this is to continue building more drainage improvement works, widening and deepening canals, improving rainwater storage systems, and using diversion canals to redirect rainwater away from overwhelmed areas. Long-term danger, sea level rise. Singapore and the rest of ASEAN will be threatened by rising sea levels when the polar ice melts due to global warming, places along the equator like Singapore will face disproportionately higher sea level rise. The rate of sea level rise is also expected to accelerate from a few millimetres per year right now to a few centimetres per year if nothing is done to curb global warming. By the end of this century, sea levels will rise here by 5 metres, par partially submerging East Coast Park and even the sports hub. Singapore has a two-pronged strategy to tackle this pressing issue. First of all, we will take the relatively cheaper option of utilising the environment to create natural barriers. Mangroves, which can be found at our shores, help to resist rising tide by reducing coastal erosion, as the plants have roots that hold onto soil, preventing the dirt at our coasts from slowly being chipped away into the sea. Mangroves are also three times more effective than, um, uh, in, than forests in taking in carbon dioxide, making them a key contributor in the fight against global warming. Mangroves all over Southeast Asia are, however, being threatened as they cannot relocate inland due to urban development and resource exploitation, reducing suitable soil for them to escape to, hence wiping out many of them as sea levels rise. The second approach to this issue is to implement hard engineering solutions, uh, such as sea walls and stone, and stone embankments that currently already protect 70% of our coastline, as well as elevation of critical infrastructure such as Changi Airport Terminal 5 and Tuas Port, keeping them safe from harm. Singaporeans are encouraged to write into the Coastal Protection Department of the Public Utilities Board PUB, for ideas on how to protect the sustainability of our coastlines. Singapore's role in solving climate change Singapore aims to become a climate solution hub by investing in research on the relatively underdeveloped field of climate science in tropical regions. This will allow us to develop more accurate models of sea level rise for this region, reducing our dependence on less reliable global forecasts. The National Sea Level Programme under the Centre for Climate Research Singapore is working with many regional non-governmental organisations and officials to preserve natural habitat. Singapore also introduced the Singapore Green Plan 2030, which provides financing for sustainable and renewable projects, with the sustainability sector expected to create 55,000 jobs over the next decade. Singapore's green and sustainability-linked loan grant scheme will allow small and medium-sized enterprises SMEs, to reduce the cost of obtaining green loans. The development of sustainable smart cities worldwide is needed, as cities provide 75% of all carbon emissions worldwide. This means that efficient energy usage in cities is crucial in saving the environment and providing cost savings. Singapore, which is aiming to become a sustainable smart city, will encourage the adoption of electric vehicles by deploying 60,000 charging points, uh, requiring cars on the road to be clean energy models by uh, 2030, and then phasing out all internal combustion engine models by 2040. Singapore will also install five times the number, uh, current number of solar panels on HDB flat rooftops by 2030, with the ability to power 350,000 households at peak energy output. Singapore will additionally serve as a commercial test hub for green technologies like hydrogen and battery storage cap capabilities. 
Because Singapore lacks land for traditional agriculture, we will continue constructing vertical farms and sustainable aquaculture through the $60 million Agri-Food Cluster Transformation Fund. Singapore will also serve as a plant protein production hub as well as a plant protein and cell cultured protein research hub for the region. Singapore as a polluter while Singapore may only contribute 0.1% of total carbon emissions, this does not mean that we are absolved of any responsibility in the worsening climate crisis. In reality, Singaporeans emit twice the global average per person. Hence, uh, we have a set of uh, goal um, cutting our carbon emissions by 36% uh, from our 2005 levels by 2030. Uh, under the Paris Climate Agreement. As this transition cannot happen instantaneously, we must start with small steps such as eating less meat, using less polluting methods of transport like cycling for short distances, turn off appliances when not in use, and plant more trees to take carbon out of the system. Biden's Earth Day Climate Change Summit all 40 world leaders invited to US President Joe Biden's summit attended to it online, including key figures such as Chinese President Xi Jinping, Russian President Vladimir Putin, and most importantly, Singapore President, uh, sorry, Singapore Prime Minister Lee Hsien Long. Some key officials, corporate figures, and other leaders were invited, including billionaire philanthropist uh, Bill Gates and Catholic leader Pope Francis. New U.S. Climate Target The U.S. set a new climate target, which is to cut emissions by 50% below 2005 levels by 2030. This nationally determined contribution, NDC, is required under the Paris Climate Agreement and must be periodically updated. The U.S. called on other nations to raise their NDC ambitions along with them. The U.S. is the second largest polluter, contributing nearly 15% of total emissions, which is roughly half of top polluter China's emissions. However, it is however important to note that the U.S. having a much smaller population in China makes their statistics all the more alarming. Japan, Canada, South Korea, Europe, and Australia also announced revisions to their plans or targets. The Swedish environmental activist Greta Thunberg was not part of the summit, but she criticized the target set by most attending countries, saying that they were full of exploitable loopholes, such as emissions involved in imported goods produced overseas not being counted, and transport such as aviation and shipping not being counted in calculations as well. American ambitions. Biden announced a US dollar $174 billion plan to boost electrical vehicle production and construct electrical vehicle charging stations. Biden also audaciously claimed that all American-made buses will be zero emission by 2030 and that the US would surpass China's electrical vehicle production. He did not offer an explanation as to how the US would actually achieve this. Biden stated that the US would finally pay up another US uh, $1.2 billion to the Green Climate Fund, GCF. The GCF helps poorer countries transition to green energy sources. The US had earlier pledged to donate US $3 billion to the GCF in 2014, but had only given one uh, US uh, billion US dollars thus far. Uh, furthermore, most other donor countries had doubled their commitments to the GCF uh, in 2019, meaning that the US has not only fallen short of their pledged contributions, but has also been less ambitious overall than the other nations involved too.